Hello, friends and lovers. We're doing a little garden update today because things are going really well in the garden and I think you're gonna be pretty excited about some of the things you see here today. So, I've been working very, very hard despite the mega heat wave. Out here getting heat stroke every day. But I will show you where we are. Nothing gets finished instantly. It's all a process. Okay. Get out of my potatoes. All right, that's how she washes her paws. All right, so let's see what we have. Well, it's hard to see because of the light, but there's the Delaware River over there. So as you know, we live near the Delaware River and things don't slope uphill to rivers. Things slope downhill to rivers. I find that over time, our dirt gets washed that way, downward towards the river. So I started this project um, it's kind of hard to tell, but Frugal Daddy removed that tree. There's a tree stump over there by Wally's butt. So he needs to take the chainsaw and like cut it lower than ground level so I can cover it with dirt. But anyway, I am digging up the dirt here. There's a big mound that Liesl's laying on because it's nice and cool. And I'm going to build a little brick wall really like right through where she is. Like a little brick wall going like that. And then it'll... Instead of having a hill going down, it'll have like the wall and then down to the, that's what I'm doing. And doing the same thing on this side. This is a very small part of my potato farm. So after the last gardening video, a lot of people advised me in no uncertain terms. They, they wanted me to hill up my potatoes. And uh, so I did. I mean, you might, might not be able to tell, but I've excavated quite a bit of dirt here and they've all gotten massively mounded up. I mean, the whole area has, because I've been excavating. And then I've been bringing wheelbarrows of this dirt back up to this end of the garden. I think I've brought four or five wheelbarrows full to hill these potatoes. At least I'll show them the potatoes. So again, I'm not sure how much you can tell, but I have spent a lot of time and effort hilling these potatoes. I have hilled them extensively. The older potato plants at the back didn't really enjoy the hilling process that much. I mean, they could get bigger hills, but you know what? I held them. All right, so remember this little plant we had going here at this far end of this garden? Uh, and I thought it was some kind of salad green, and it is. I'm pretty sure it's arugula, but let's go ahead and try a bite. See, I'll try one. It was very sandy. I had to brush the dirt off. Yeah, it's definitely arugula. And you know what I've realized? I don't like arugula. I don't like it at all. I don't know why I planted this. Like if anybody wants some fresh organic baby arugula, come on by, because it is so, oh, I hate it. It's like bitter and peppery, which I know is like, that's what arugula is supposed to taste like. I know people who love it, but apparently that's what I planted. I don't know why, but I had this big batch of seeds for slow bolt arugula. So I planted them. We've got our zucchini plants. They're doing really nicely every day. I come out to the garden first thing in the morning because I just like to check everything. I just want to know what kind of magic happened overnight. And these zucchini plants are just growing so beautifully. I just love them. I've been staking up my tomatoes here with just whatever I've had. That's like a stick I can put in the ground. But I did go to Home Depot the other day to buy some tomato steaks because I thought, okay, they're never going to be cheaper. And I just need to make the investment into some proper farm equipment, like tomato steaks, really, really, really tall ones. Here are more potatoes. I haven't mounted these ones really yet. I got six really, really tall tomato steaks, the green kind, like this one that has the little knobs on it. I got, um, no, I got four. Wait a minute, what did I get? I got four that are like eight feet tall and then six that are like one size smaller. So I got the 10 tomato steaks. I got five really small tomato cages, like way too small to be a tomato cage, way too small. But that's fine because what I, I use the little cage um, when I plant the little baby hydrangeas, you know, that I, I snip and I, I root and make a new shrubbery. So when I put those in the ground, the dogs like kill them. They crush them, of course, why wouldn't they? And so I wanted to get the cages to protect them. So I got five cages 
that were all rusty. I even asked, are you selling these for full price? Because they look kind of old and rusty. Uh-huh. Okay. I just learned something yesterday about tomatoes, if you want to know. Um, I'm going to tell you how much all that costs in a second. That's why I was talking about it. But I learned that if tomatoes are being like super leafy and lush and that they're not producing flowers and tomatoes, they have too much nitrogen. And I could see myself making that mistake because I do like to give my plants lots of free nitrogen. I don't buy my fertilizers. They're all free, but apparently no on tomatoes if they're not producing fruit. So that was really good to know. Anyway. Oh, well, let's look at the blackberries. They are starting to get ripe. So 10 tomato steaks, five small rusted plant cages. It came to, guess the price, $108. I'm sorry. Is that freaking ridiculous? $108? Those tomato steaks were like 10 bucks each. It's ridiculous. It made me mad. I need to find a better source. But anyway, the blackberries are, in fact, ripening. Wally, you want to go back to the orchard? All right, I have something very exciting to show you in the back orchard. Remember when we were out there last time and I showed you the little baby pears and the little baby peaches. So we'll get an update on those. Plus there's something else. So here we are back in the orchard. And remember but there were all those really, really, really tall weeds. Well, I pulled a lot of them out and they're drying out, decaying on the ground at the moment because I wanted the pears and the peaches to have more airflow around them. That's a pear. So here's the first pear tree. The baby pears are growing nicely. Making friends with the big plant that like tripled in size this year. I was happy to find these railroad ties back here because I'm gonna use these to make a raised uh, planting bed as well as the wood from the kid's old sandbox. So here we are at the peach tree and the peaches are still very small and hard and green and fuzzy, but some of them are starting to get a little bit of a blush color. I come out and visit them every day, make sure the squirrels know what's what. So when I was clearing away all of these giant weed trees, so that the pears and peaches could have more air. I noticed this right in my face. The apple tree has apples. Remember last time I said the apple tree didn't have apples? And we've never had apples. We've planted these trees, what, 12 years ago? But we actually have apples. There's no bigger thrill than growing your own food. Look at them, I say. So do we all remember the aforementioned fig plant? It's just become enormous all of a sudden with these massive leaves. And now I can understand. Uh, it all makes sense. It all makes sense now, Lisa. The whole Adam and Eve and the fig leaf thing, I was, cause our fig plant wasn't very big. And I was like, what are they gonna do with these little leaves? You know, to cover their new to tay, but these leaves are freaking huge. So I can see it. Anyway, figs grow under the leaves. And so I come over and I check and I never see any figs. But today, exciting development number two, or is it three? We have figs starting. That's a little baby nubbin of a fig. Big nubbins, nubbins, nubbins. Ooh, there's a bunch over here. I think there were a couple of years where Frugal Daddy did harvest figs off of this, but I don't think I ate them. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my fig newtons, uh, but until they become a fig newton, I don't necessarily want to eat the figs. I was just about to say, okay, there's the complete update. 
But no, there's more because I want to show you my blueberry bushes because they're doing okay. Remember when when we when we bought the blueberry bushes, I took too long to plant them and they were like dying in their pots. A couple of them I have back by the hydrangea babies by the pond and they're doing like really, really, really well. But anyway, the ones over here on the side of the house are also doing really well. So I'll show you there when that will be done. So there we have two blueberry bushes. This one seems to have this vine thing growing up it, which is not acceptable because you're going to choke it. Let me get rid of you, you little bastard. Come on. Okay, so blueberry bush. Blueberry bush. The strawberries seem to be done with making strawberries for the season, so now I think they are busy making baby strawberry plants. We've got another blueberry bush. I just kind of planted them in between these boxwoods. I planted these boxwoods when we also first moved here, like whatever I said it was, 12 or 13 years ago. And I swear they haven't even grown. Like they are the slowest growing shrubbery around. Now this little guy is a blueberry, and I thought he had a leaf, but he really isn't looking too happy right now. What is that? Oh, you had a stick in there. Um, he really, yeah, he's, he's, um, I don't think he's coming back. Ooh, but you're looking well. Oh my God, look. I was going to say, oh look, there's a green blueberry or two, but oh look. There's a blue blueberry, blue blueberry. I am gonna pick it before the squirrels get it and a second one. I think I'm gonna take a picture of all the produce I harvest. This would be a picture. Oh yes, I've been tie dyeing. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, I'm gonna document all my produce. Do any of you ever put, um, why am I saying hydrogen peroxide? That's not what I'm talking about. Epsom salts. Do you ever put Epsom salts in your garden? Epsom salts. They're from Epsom in England, and they're not salt at all. It's magnesium. And some plants apparently love magnesium. Apparently, the tomato plant loves magnesium, but leafy greens, not so much. I, I just, I don't know. Look how cute. That's Liesl's boyfriend. All right, kittens, there we are. That is the full Monty. Oh, God, an update. Well, here's the reason my hands look like this right now, because I've been tie-dyeing, and of course, putting on gloves would be bothersome. I've been watching a lot of tie-dye videos lately, so I'm trying a whole bunch of different techniques. These are all, obviously all ice dyeing. This one, you can see the ice has melted. This was covered in ice. I started this one early in the morning. It's actually a pillowcase. And uh, these, have, these have to sit for 24 hours, so I'll show you when I... Um, you know, untie them. I just like love looking at those colors. What I'm trying to do, each one of these things that sticks out is supposed to be like a flower burst. And then this area is what's in between the flowers. So we'll see how that comes out. All right, it's the next morning and it's time to rinse out the tie dye. I'm going to do that one first and then I'll show you what it looks like. Alrighty, so here's the pillowcase. There's one side. It's super pretty, but it's not quite the giant flower effect I was going for. Here's the other side where I did that flower and that flower. That's supposed to be a flower coming up out of the corner. Not quite sure how that big purple blob got right there. But, uh, well, it's definitely colorful. I mean, I like... I like how I did the yellow center of the flower. It just kind of loses, I mean, it sort of has a petal pattern, but it kind of loses it. A lot of getting a project correct, I've found over the years, is having the right tools and equipment, which I don't completely have for this. I don't want to make excuses. i got to work on my techniques here, but I need different string. All right, next I'll rinse this one. This is a t-shirt in a a traditional spiral twist and then I kind of did like a zigzag pattern on it so I will rinse that out all right so here's that t-shirt that looks amazing to me when you use the powdered dyes and then they they blend in as ice melts you you get this incredible splitting of the powdered dye colors which 
I, I just love, like, I just love bright colors. When I watch home decorating videos and people have these like incredibly neutral homes that are all beige or all gray, it's like, ah, how can you live like that? I want color everywhere. All right, let me show you the back. And there's the back. It's not a perfect spiral, but it's, it's pretty cool. I was thinking of having some white t-shirts printed up that say freaking frugal on them and then tie dyeing them and trying to sell them. Do you think that's a good idea? Do you guys want that? You never know what the tie dye will come out looking like, but it's always cool. Don't you love that like hot fuchsia purple line? I love it. All right. And last but not least, this one, this one I was trying, what was I trying for? Um, well, I don't know. Let's see what it turns out looking like. And then I'll tell you that that that's just what I was going for success. Alrighty. And here is that shirt. So I am really excited about how it turned out. Cause I think it looks really cool for my first attempt at a kind of a mandala thing. You can kind of see like the star pattern. I really like this. I think this looks really cool. Like I can't believe that I'm responsible for that cool pattern. And like these things that look like flower petals, kind of. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, let me just show you what Frugal Daddy found on the way to Walmart, and then we'll let Wally say goodbye. So remember when I was going on and on about the expensive tomato steaks at Home Depot? He found these six tomato steaks sticking out of a garbage can and nothing else. Like it doesn't matter that they're bent here like that. That's just, I mean, that's like $60 worth of tomato steaks right there. Can you believe they charge $10 for this? Like, it's, it's uh, I was 100% polaxed when I saw those. Gobsmacked. Shocked. Flabbergasted. Well, thanks for watching. Frugal Daddy just got back from dumpster diving, so I know we're going to have a dumpster diving video coming up for you very soon. I hope you guys are doing well. Please like, subscribe, share, comment below. Can you say thanks for watching? Oh, you're so cute. <laughs>